This is the On the Pony Express podcast, part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three, here we go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. Thanks for listening. I am Billy Embody. Appreciate you guys following us here. We've got a lot to get to on the podcast today as SMU did reel in a basketball commitment in the front court. So we will get to that. But first, guys, we got to remind you, we're presented by Status Jet. StatusJet.com is where you can get all the information from David Henry and his team on what they can do for you in the private jet charter space. If you're looking to buy a plane, sell a plane, they can also help you with that. 866-953-3442 is where you can call them to get more information. And we're continuing to hammer home to you guys that summer is upon us. It is May. If you don't have your travel plans finalized, or if you want to reevaluate those travel plans, reach out to Status Jet. They can take you and send you to a place that is hard to get to, that is uh, exclusive, that is uh, private, like Bora Bora or many of the other islands around the uh, around the globe. And I think that's where you can find maybe that value in reaching out and having the conversation. And on top of that, use code PONYUPACC. That'll get you a discount from our friends at Status Jet on a round trip flight. So talk with them, see what your options are and just start the conversation. Maybe it's something that makes sense for you, your business or your family down the line. Status Jet is where you can find that level of luxury with that attention to detail while you're getting from point A to point B. SMU basketball, we talked about it. They're still swinging away in the transfer portal and they hit on a former four-star prospect coming out of high school in the transfer portal. And that is Jarrell Colbert, somebody that I'm really familiar with. I covered him as a high school prospect. He's from uh, the Houston area and ended up uh, going to a couple different high school, a couple different high school. He played um, some really high level high school basketball throughout his career. Uh, But now after ending up at LSU and then Kansas State, he is committed to the Mustangs. And this is one that I think makes a lot of sense. And look, uh, SMU was gunning for Tomislav Ivicic, who committed to Illinois last week. Kind of a, quite honestly, a little bit of of a surprise for SMU there as they were in pretty deep on uh, the seven-footer from from Croatia. Um, And look, I was just excited to maybe one day do a feature on him, head out to Croatia and, uh, you know, meet his family and see where he grew up if he hit it big at SMU. But not to be. We we can't expense the trip anymore. Look, uh, it's the sixth transfer transfer edition for Andy Enfield and company. He has two years of eligibility remaining, uh, but he got to LSU. He didn't really play much, um, and and that was Will Wade's last season. So after Will Wade uh, was let go, he chose to head to Kansas State, where he had some relationships with Jer- Jerome Tang. He redshirted in the 2022-2023 season and then played in 31 games with 13 starts this past season. He averaged 2.6 rebounds and uh, uh, got 2.6 points, 2.3 rebounds, and uh, 0.4 assists a game. But this is a defensive take for SMU's front court. Uh, He has always been regarded as a really competent, uh, strong defensive presence in terms of what he is as a prospect. And that's something that SMU needed to go ahead and address and get on their roster anyway even after, you know, missing on Thomas Lavivicic. I, I think for me, the projection now is getting Jarrell Colbert to that next level, to that potential that he's shown at different points throughout his career. He's 6'10", 235, and there's really a, a, a hope that he can reach that. And you look at the 13 starts that he had last year for the Wildcats, uh, he was able to actually play against USC and Andy Enfield last season. And so they got a look at uh, him in the season opener. He had 13 minutes, went two for three from the field. He had two rebounds. He had four points. He had two blocks. 
Um, and unfortunately also picked up four fouls in that game. But I think Jarrell Colbert is kind of a project type of take. He is somebody that is not necessarily going to be relied upon as a starter. Um, but you saw the flash again Cincinnati last year on the road, grabbed 15 points in 17 minutes uh, that and seven rebounds. And that's what SMU is hoping to get out of him. And uh, for me personally, it'd be fun to see because I've been waiting for him to, to reach that potential since his days at LSU when I covered him as a, as a prospect coming out of high school. But I, I think this is a really smart take, a wise take uh, for the coaching staff. And, and now uh, they continue down the road of, uh, you know, trying to acquire more transfer talent um, and, and, can, and round out this roster. I mean, there's not many spots left. I do think in terms of what's next for the program, They've got to go out and, and add another piece to the backcourt. They've got to add a surefire uh, um, starter at center. I think Jarrell Colbert can can help uh, in, in regards to building out that, that front court without a doubt. I like that he's, he's a defensive presence. There are other players on this roster that they have coming in that can help them when it comes to um, producing offensively, especially you look at the backcourt that they've uh, picked up so far, uh, I I think SMU's done well here to pick up a guy like Jarrell Colbert, not somebody who's a four four year, you know, not as much upside. He's got two years. If it works out, great. If not, he is a good kid. Uh, that is something that was uh, also reiterated, and they they feel like they've really done a nice job of of building a roster and combination of guys that can mesh well, just personality wise, but. Um, now they have uh, two spots uh, by my count. Uh, so they have uh, the the six transfers now are Cario Aquendo from Oregon, A.J. George from Long Beach State, Booby Miller from Wake Forest, Johan Treor from uh, UC Santa Barbara, and UMass transfer Matt Cross. So Jarrell Colbert makes six. Then you have the two high school additions and Mitchell Holmes and Chance Perrier. That gets you to eight. And then the three returners, Chuck Harris, B.J. Edwards, and Keon Ambrose Hilton, gets you to 11. So two spots remaining. They got Matt Cross. That was huge news for SMU to reel him in and, and address that three spot with a surefire uh, minute eater who plays really hard. He can set the tone. Now they can go out and find a best available front court type, whether it be the power forward spot or the center spot. But really, they need a true five um, or as – or a player that they feel like can play the five and be productive and be a starter. And that's what they've got a gun for now. And then maybe address the backcourt with a kind of a long-term piece, somebody that can you know, join the program and develop as uh, this roster and this group of veteran backcourt players really lets, lets themselves um, you know, work together and, and, and try to find that, that magic touch for the 2024, 2025 season together bring somebody in that you can develop as a true guard who can then grow with a chance per year in Mitchell Holmes and um, whoever you pick up in the 2025 class. So that's it on SMU basketball uh, really for right now. I can tell you just a quick uh, transition here. We're going to see SMU's coaching staff go into a little bit more of a 2025 recruiting mode. They're also going to be looking to fill out those two roster spots with transfers. Don't get me wrong. But uh, this is that time of year. Junior visits are going to start happening, so we're going to report on those as we can. The live periods are starting to get going, so this staff is now getting out onto the trail to, to do more of that. Uh, I believe this weekend is live. Um, if not, it's the next weekend, but they're going to start hosting. Uh, I think next weekend is live. So they're going to start hosting some junior visits and then get to more live period stuff. And they're going to have to balance all that with finding two more transfers. And there's a lot of programs around the country that are in that spot. I mean, you look at look up at the portal window or the portal for college basketball, and there's still, let's see, now this in the past week or so has really been a run. There's been there's now 61 percent of prospects in the portal are now uh, committed. When you look at the top available big men. Look, I mean, they're going to have to find somebody. Maybe they find a way to go international or whatnot, but uh, there are still some 
players out there in the transfer portal. So we'll be keeping an eye out on that. We'll be doing some digging. That's another reason why you should subscribe to On the Pony Express for just a dollar for two months using code SMU1. That's SMU, the number one. Actually, I had a chance to meet one of our uh, faithful YouTube listeners after uh, my hockey game this week. So that was pretty cool. He came up to me and and said, uh, um, don't want to say his name on air because I don't, you know, don't know how people are about that, but just appreciate everybody who listens. And if you see me out or whatever, just happy to chop it up with you about SMU basketball, SMU football, whatever. Um, or we can uh, you know, talk about our beer league hockey game. So um, we at least got the dub. So I'm not too embarrassing on the ice, apparently. Uh, or maybe I am. That uh, said, SMU football is gearing up for a major stretch run here. And we're going to have you guys covered it on theponyexpress.com with it. And I can tell you right now, I just dropped a piece of the visitor list for this weekend on the site. Some changes Obviously, to the visitor list, you had guys like Ricky Stewart and Elijah Barnes commit to Texas. They're off the board. But I can tell you there are a couple of high-profile wide receivers, and I wanted to touch on them uh, without giving away the entire visitor list for this weekend. And one of those that is coming in is Taz Williams out of Red Oak High School. SMU's done well recruiting Red Oak over the past couple of years. They have Zach Smith, who they signed there, uh, Kamarian Morgan, who is now at Dallas South Oak Cliff is there or was there they have Braden robinson who's still a top target for them in this uh 2026 class uh they have um you know just really mind it well and so they're going to bring in taz williams he's somebody who's been high on smu for a while since he got back to campus this spring he was an early early visitor for rob likens and you know swung through uh that that program to see him this spring and SMU is in a, a bit of a battle here. The, this is a high-profile receiver in terms of his offers. He's really uh, gotten uh, some some uh, major, major recruiting, um, you know, uh, powers going after him this cycle. I think for me, I'm interested to see when the dust settles from some of these high-profile uh, recruitments that some of these other schools are in, what, where does that leave Taz Williams? Because he has the Michigans, the Ohio States, uh, the um, uh, Texas, the Texas A&M, some of these programs kind of hanging around in his recruitment. But we've also seen some bigger programs kind of drop off as they've landed some commitments as well. Uh, Penn State is another school, and Arkansas is another school that he's high on. I think SMU is battling here really well and you see him he's a four-star prospect um on the on three industry ranking so espn and rivals are the two that have him as a four-star i think with taz he's kind of the prime example of when you're pretty developed as a prospect and you've been around the training world for quite some time colleges might ask themselves okay what's next what's next in his development and I think he's a really good playmaking receiver at the high school level. I think what he needs to continue to work on is, is his top end burst and speed. So SMU is doing a good job recruiting him. He is a good prospect. He's not maybe the level of some of these other DFW receivers that are getting a lot of burn in terms of rankings and recruiting this cycle, like a Decorian Moore or a Kalik Lockett, who are five-star receivers. But Taz is a good player. He's being brought in on an official visit this weekend. And uh, the Mustangs could very well end up winning this recruiting battle. I'm intrigued out of the targets that SMU is set to bring in over the next two weekends. Taz might be one of the most interesting ones. I saw him this fall for Red Oak. Uh, he had a touchdown, I believe, on the first drive. It was a jump ball. Very impressive play. He's a smooth route runner. I like how polished he is. Uh, he could be a steady, steady receiver for SMU if they end up getting him. Uh, but they've got to battle uh, some other top end programs to get him. And he's got some other official visits that he's got lined up. And, and uh, that includes Michigan, Texas A&M uh, on the list. And, and Ohio State is tentatively scheduled as well. So we'll be keeping an eye on, on that one to see uh, which official visits he makes from here on out. But I do feel like SMU really got the ball rolling on this one in the right direction earlier this spring by hosting him uh, for a visit and getting him back on campus to just, uh, just get the conversation back going. You know, he really hit a big, big recruiting burst there. And before you know it, he hasn't been on campus in a, in a minute. So 
that was big to get him back and, and start that ball rolling in the right direction. SMU has also been recruiting uh, Lucas Lovejoy, uh, the high school that is known for just rolling offensively out there. Uh, they've got Jackson Lavender on the roster, wide receiver who, who starred there for Lovejoy, and Lovejoy's produced some other high-level FBS uh, football prospects. But SMU is getting one of you know probably the highest recruited guys um, from that program on campus for an official visit. Dalen McCutcheon, top 100 prospect for on three, will be on campus this weekend for an official visit. And this is quietly one that SMU is – you know, hung around with because Dalen is a guy who is, you know, got official visits to Ohio State, Texas, USC, Florida State lined up. He's visited Notre Dame. He's been to a bunch of programs throughout the spring. And even the new Alabama staff offered him in March. You don't hear much about SMU on this one. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe, maybe coaches around the country don't know that SMU is quietly lurking around in this recruitment and and poised to potentially make a move with their official visit this weekend. But Dalen is going to be on campus. This is a big chance for SMU to turn the tide in this recruitment. And he's fresh off uh, another trip to Ohio State earlier this, this spring. Uh, his top eight is Ohio State, Florida State, Texas, SMU, Stanford, USC, Tennessee, and Florida. He's made three visits to Ohio State. They're really maybe a school that's starting to trend here um, in this recruitment, but he's going to take all of his official visits and he's going to decide this summer. He's a top 100 player for on three, number 93, 99 overall, four, number 14 receiver nationally, 20th best prospect in Texas. I I think Dalen is, is going to be an interesting one uh, here. Um, I really am, am intrigued to see uh, who ends up turning up the heat here for him and who starts making a move for him when it comes to his official visits and who prioritizes him because he is a high-profile guy. He's also a slot receiver, in my opinion. He's a good one. He can he can move around. He can make some plays. Um, I think I saw he had a solid track time this spring, which is encouraging at that position because – you know, you, you've got to have the elite speed to, to make this work. But uh, he's somebody who we're going to see um, come in for an official visit. And SMU is going to figure out where they stand and then stack their board from there. So um, two high profile wide receivers from the DF, DFW area are going to be on campus. There are also um, there's also a flip target that's going to be on campus who we won't reveal on the pod. We will share it on the message board. So again, subscribe uh, for a dollar for two months with code SMU1. That'll get you the inside scoop on who's uh, going to be on SMU's campus. But look, before we go on to uh, the next portion of our podcast, head to statusjet.com, talk with our friends over there and, and see what they can do for you. In the private jet space, it's so important to have that attention to detail. And that's why Status Jet. Uh, is a place that you should look into. Use that code PONYUPACC on a round trip discount, and you can even try them using that. You know, I mean, that's the great thing is you're not locked in. They do have opportunities to purchase a card where you can preload miles, you can preload hours, uh, from what I understand, which is a great option for those who really get out in the private jet space. But Status Jet has a team that is dedicated to getting you from point A to point B with a high level of luxury that you would expect from a uh, private jet company. So reach out to David Henry and his team. They're proud supporters of S SMU Athletics and uh, the On the Pony Express podcast as well. It's really uh, exciting times with Status Jet. So looking forward to uh, working with them and, and sharing more details about how you guys can get around on SMU game day and, and really make your fall, uh, your first fall in the ACC, a memorable one. Keeping with the SMU football train here, uh, the coaching staff is back out on the recruiting trail. So we're seeing uh, coaches go out and see some of their top targets um, in the 2025 class and beyond. New offers have gone out. But one thing we're also seeing is SMU football go after transfer still. And there are a limited number of spots here, but SMU did extend a new transfer offer this week as well. And they offered Treshawn 
uh, Devon's. Uh, who's a former Duncanville standout. He's played at Rice. We know the overall uh, success SMU has had bringing in Rice transfers. Uh, and he's got an interesting story. He's been really banged up throughout his career, but he broke out last year with 11 pass breakups and two picks. He had 45 tackles, 30 of which were solo, and he had a really solid coverage grade according to PFF. Duke, Notre Dame, Colorado have hosted him while Houston, Tulane, Nebraska, Rutgers, Vanderbilt, and others have been in contact and expressed interest. Ricky Hunley went, it, went ahead and extended an offer to Treshawn uh, to get them in the mix here. They're hoping to get him on campus for an official visit. We know SMU has been kicking the tires on some other transfer names in the cornerback room, and so we're keeping an eye on that. When it comes to SMU's plan with the transfer portal, and in particular corner, they've got to find somebody that they really, really like uh, to help them right away. And that's why you're seeing them look at, for the most part, these one-year guys that will come in and be one and done and and start and contribute and then be out the door. And um, I think the interesting thing is going to be where they go with maybe that last scholarship spot if they uh, do do anything with it what do they do that's going to be the interesting question that i have uh but treshawn is somebody that's been on the radar for a long time for smu and he's a very very steady player and, and i think that's that's really why smu ended up going ahead and and making a move here and offering him because <clears throat> i think sometimes you can when maybe you get exposed to players too much or you know so much about them, you can almost talk yourself out of them being good. But, you know, Treshawn is somebody that might very well be worth bringing in for a visit. Very limited risk here. You have a Duncanville kid who can help you just, you know, continue to build that relationship at that high school. And, very good kid who's going to leave Rice with his degree, all of those things. This seems like kind of a no-brainer for SMU to go ahead and, and bring him in for a visit. And, you know, they've been kicking around the tires on, on some of these other transfer portal corners that we've touched on on the site. So you can go head there for, for some of the, uh, for some of the uh, scoop on that. And so we encourage you to do that. But this is this is one that might make the most sense just at at face value. Had a really good 2023 season. Is a good kid if he is truly able to stay healthy like he was this year, then we can see him be a reliable starter for SMU. I mean, we're seeing some Power 5 programs really hone in on him. So, Ricky Hundley, good offer here. I like it for SMU and we'll see where it goes from here. But that was kind of the latest on SMU recruiting um, in the transfer portal. Don't have too much to add there. Um, they have, like I said, been extending some new offers. I'm trying to see on my notes um, where else, um, anything else to, um, you know, see if see if um, there's anything else we can talk about, guys. But it's just kind of one of those weeks right now where, that we're waiting for the calm before the storm. We will do a insider podcast as well to wrap things up on uh, recruiting and preview the weekend. We'll answer mailbag, so that'll be a long one. Again, that'll just be for our OnThePonyExpress.com subscribers, so be on the lookout for that. But other than that, guys, I know it's a little bit of a shorter one, but sometimes it'd be like that. Uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the On The Pony Express podcast. We got down and dirty with some details. Uh, we will talk to you guys next week with another edition and uh, we'll see how a big recruiting weekend on the hilltop plays out so join us at ontheponeyexpress.com and follow it all hope you guys enjoyed this pod we'll catch you next time thanks for listening to the on the pony express podcast with billy embody follow us on your socials on x at smu on three and on instagram at on three smu and keep it locked to ontheponeyexpress.com for more coverage